Hello and welcome to the Friendship News Hour presented to you by Bummer Dude Media. Today is March 15th, 2022, the Ides of March. I think this is when uh, they stabbed Putin in the rotunda. I think that's the historical significance of today. <laughs> that's what it is? Okay. <laughs> His name is Alex. My name is Frank. Uh, yeah, today is the Ides of March. No, I think that's when uh, a bunch of guys were dudes in uh, Rome. And they stab Caesar. Yeah, man. Sad day. Also, well, depending on who you ask, it's a great movie, too. I don't know if you've ever seen it with George Clooney and what's his name? What's Pretty Boy's name? Matt Damon. Who's in La La, no, La, La Land. Do we have a late addition to the show? Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Tremendous. Am I on? Hello. You're on. You're in All mid right, season cool. form with that haircut, too. You look great. <laughs> you like the mullet? It's a trash can, the mullet. <laughs> It's coming in. That's amazing. So I'm supposed to look like I'm on the east side, Toledo. But it's, gonna, it's, only, it's only gonna keep getting better. I promise. It looks terrible right now, but give me like two more months. I believe it. Mr. Greg Strasbaugh, aka you who dude. How are you, man? Hey guys, it's I'm, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. It's good to see both of you. It's a great time to be alive. Very exciting time to be alive right now. Good day to be a Bucks fan. It's a great day. It's a great day to be a football fan, honestly, if, you know, if you're not a Tom Brady hater. Well, you know, there's only so many days you can tongue your boy before it gets old and <laughs> oh. you got to consider going back to playing football. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and Frank, Frank I, guess, I guess that's fine. But all I have to say about that is I'm a fan of greatness and I'm just happy that the guy's back. Hey, man, if French and your kid gets you a championship, sign me up. It'll, it'll get him eight of them. That's fine. If that's what if that's what it takes. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Dude, it took him. Um, it took him forty days. Yeah, it was a little weird. I, I honestly can't really put my mind on it on like why he retired. If he was just gonna do this, so I don't know. I think he, it sounded like they said he was pressured into it, but it's kind of weird to me because he's Tom Brady, right? Who who pressures Tom Brady, right? Bruce Arians was interviewed and he said that they asked him if they if he left the door open. He goes, he slammed the door shut. Wow. Arians, well, Arians is a stubborn guy, dude. He me also too. said yeah. a, he also said a lot of wrong wrong things about um and brown and like honestly as a head football coach i don't mind him saying something like that i mean it's it's something to say about tom brady but he's just being he's just being the head coach he's not changing who he is yeah right yeah so you kind of got to respect that but at the same time i think he's just he's playing his role he's playing his bruce arians like you know it's gonna of course he's gonna take him back though he just won him a super bowl yeah seriously but, you he know had a, basically had an mvp season last year yeah so you know i think he was maybe a little upset that he announced he was retiring so I mean, I can I can understand that. Sure. So yeah. So hey, oh, yeah. Are we excited about baseball season though? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. oh man, I can't I'm wait. so excited. I'm outside right now. What was longer, Tom Brady's retirement or the lockout? <laughs> the lockout. That was a lockout. It was a stupid lockout. That's crazy. Hey Greg, I don't know about you. You might feel differently, but I I was seriously concerned about having baseball season this year. I was very concerned, Frank. I I was worried about it, man. I mean, professional like uh, MLB wise, yes. I was thinking I was going to go see nothing but mud hens baseball. Yeah, so I was right. Kind of upset. Yeah. It's not, yeah, I honestly did not look like it was going well. So I don't know what they, what, what changed, but that, that league I'm not hearing is it's, that's not good right now. Baseball is not in a good spot. Nah, man, not at all. I, I just, it's so, it's so, uh, it's so petty. I was telling these guys before, like, I, I think golf and I'm not, I don't think I'm out of bounds here. I think golf is a more popular sport right now than baseball, the way that they're handling their superstars and the way they're handling their talent. I'd have to agree with that. They're presenting their, their sport in such a way that it gets people excited, man. And, and baseball, yep. all they want to do is, is maintain their iron grip on whatever the fuck they think that they're doing. It makes, it makes zero <laughs> sense to me, man. The moves that they make at every step are so mind boggling. You got to think, what is, what is the interest here? Is it, is it baseball? Is it the sport or is it per personal interest because right now man baseball is on a very very steep downward trend yeah i could i could totally agree with that yeah the, the decisions are making are don't make much sense to me i think the sport itself is just it's like you said it's not as interesting as it used to be that's for sure i think that has a lot to do with like the rule changes and the, the testing and everything and you know i it's, and like you said, golf's more in a more of an appealing sport right now to people. I even think lacrosse is and UFC and a lot of other yeah. sports are. Oh yeah. yeah. Twenty years ago, growing up, baseball was it was everything. It was it was just as important to any kid as football was. 
but I feel like it's it's a huge difference now. Question for you. Do you think that's because of the cracking down on, on drugs? Like, do you think baseball was more fun when the uh, guys that were juiced up play, you know, or not let, but like that was something that happened because pitchers didn't just dominate like they do now? To the regular eye, I agree. Yeah. But to a baseball fan, like someone like me, I think right. baseball is fun. I thought it was fun. Steroids are not steroids. To me, yeah, right. I don't I don't need it either way. I love the sport. You're a diehard fan, right. Yeah, for people like me who really don't care, like it's it's not fun to watch. Somebody that's there to watch the playoffs and want to see home runs, like I'm I'm all for the steroids era. It was great. I mean, who, yeah. who didn't love watching Sosa and McGuire? We were eight, nine years old watching that home run race. It was incredible. I mean, that, right. baseball hasn't been more exciting than that time and when Barry Bonds was playing. So I can I can see why, you know, that I could see that point. But for me, you know, I think it's it's to me, I love the sport. So but I I could see why people, you know, it has I think it has a little bit to do with it. Talk yeah. to me about the Tigers beat, man. What are you thinking about uh Detroit baseball? I'm excited. So hey, well let's get into a little bit about Frank, you're a Padres fan. And then Al, are you are you in Chicago, right? I'm in Chicago, man. But I, to be honest with you, I'm not a baseball fan. If anything, I'm a okay. Tigers fan. My dad's from Detroit, so I, I'd root right for on. the Tigers. I was just curious before I came. In, I wanted to see what what's. Uh, I don't know exactly where you live. Like, are you downtown Chicago? I was. So I've lived all over the city. My favorite place that I lived was I lived right next to Sox Park, and it was awesome. That place is an amazing place to go see yeah. a game. My my wife worked for the Cubs though, and I had like unlimited behind the scenes access of the Cubs for a few years, and. Even that, man, I could I could go to any games. I could go see Theo's That's office, awesome. all this shit, and it's just it's never grabbed me, man. I, I don't know why. It's, it just yeah. never has. Baseball's not for everybody. I totally yeah. understand. I think, I mean, you guys are soccer fans. I, I couldn't get into it, so it's yeah. just one of those things. Mm -hmm. I totally understand that. But, hey, I I wanted to know what's is there, is there hype out there right now for the White Sox is what I'm curious about. Being a Tigers fan and knowing knowing a little bit about the sport, I think – the White Sox should have an exciting year, and I wanted to see what the city of Chicago is like. Have they turned on the Cubs, or what's the deal? Out yeah, there? so yeah, I'm a big sports radio guy here, so that's that's I still hear all the talk about it, and and they're hype, man. They were they were really hype last year too, but this year it sounds like they picked up a a, a pitcher, I think, from the Dodgers. Is that Joe Kelly? Yeah. yeah. I think so. That's a good addition, and I don't think they really lost too many people. So, city's definitely hype on them. They kind of have. I mean, you'll always have Cubs fans, man. Those Cubs fans rooted for way worse teams for way longer. Yeah. But it, it seems like the city of Chicago is behind the White Sox now. Exciting. It's it's exciting. I think it's exciting for our division at being a Tigers fan. They should take the Central, no? Yeah, I I, I would say so. A lot of people are saying uh, all of a sudden Minnesota's a dark horse after that trade they made. I would think the Tigers have a good chance of taking second. Oh, they got the uh, A's pitcher, no? The Twins made a trade yesterday with the Yankees and got Urshela and uh, Sanchez. Okay. Oh, well. So they kind of got better in their, their lineup, but they gave up a good shortstop for that and a catcher and Donaldson. Josh Donaldson went to the Yankees. So oh, no shit. Okay. The, yeah, it was Donaldson. Interesting. The twin shortstop for Sanchez and Gio uh, Urshela. I love Josh Donaldson, man. Yeah, he hits bombs, and I think he's real comparable to Sanchez. So I think that trade kind of benefits both those teams. Uh, the Padres gave up a shortstop to a motorcycle accident. <laughs> Is that what that was? Yeah. So, so I'm talking about Fernando Tatis Jr. He has a he has a broken wrist, and they and they asked him if it was due to a motorcycle accident, and he said, "Which one?" <laughs> That's really, <laughs> dude. What? I know, That's man. Incredible. They were interviewing Bob Melvin, and they go, "Do you? Uh, uh, what do you think about Tatis riding motorcycles?" He goes, "I think those days are over." <laughs> well, yeah, I would, I would hope so. Now, fucking you would think. a man, that sucks. I mean, no, it's just unfortunate for the sport of baseball and everything. He's one of them superstars that actually was keeping the sport alive. So it sucks to see. Is he out for the whole season or what? No, just three, three months. months. Yeah, three oh, months, something like bad, that. But. but yeah, man, I mean, I can't remember the last time there was a Padres player where uh, kids from other cities outside of San Diego want to wear their jersey. Yeah, you know I, what I, I mean? would like, say Tony Gwynn would be the, would be the yeah. one I could think. That's, That's it. the only one. But even then, like he wasn't... Uh, no, he wasn't, he wasn't a flashy this, guy, you know? He just, this is, he just hit the it's ball. It's different now. It's a different era, too. You got the internet. Tatis is all over. If you, you hear baseball, you're thinking either of the, the kid from the Braves or Tatis or, you know, there's only a few. Otani. It's like the, yeah. 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 They put right. up this, uh, I Trout. saw this little, this uh, tweet and it was about the Twitter followers 
and it was uh, it was Mike Trout versus Tyler Hero of the Miami Heat. And yeah. I think Tyler Hero has like a million and a half more followers on Twitter than does the best baseball player in the world. I believe that. He's got a Jack Harlow song named after him, though. So I could, I totally believe that. It's, the it's same outrageous, for like, uh, dude. Hockey. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't baseball is not big right now in the States, man. It's I wild. think um, my dad actually stopped umpiring just recently. And Did he, he started, really? Uh, well, he's he's uh, like for the past four years, maybe he's been officiating uh, lacrosse out here, which oh, is nice. the same. Yeah. It's his, he says, you know, it's the same pay for this for a quicker like the games are a lot quicker. Yeah, you get the same pay for that you would for a baseball game. Yeah, and so, way more athletic. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a lot more fun. I'm sure, it's less pressure too. Yeah, he just said it was yeah. all learning the rules and then kind of from there. He said a lot of people around here don't know the rules of lacrosse because it's not that big yet. So yeah, you know the people that do it's. They know what they're doing, and other than that, he says it's just getting pretty big out here. Hey, did yeah. they did they for real uh, eliminate the shift? I I do. We got. Can somebody look that up? I will. I will look no, it up because I think they eliminated it for uh, not this season, but next season. I want to say I'm all for the. Uh, I, I think a lot of there's a big argument for the uh, universal DH this year. I'm kind of for it. I've always kind of been for it. It's fair both league. I never understood why the one league didn't have to have a DH and the one yeah. did. So. Didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Dude, yeah, and I'd go watch Cubs games, and it's like I'm watching John Lester step up to the plate, and it's a joke, man. It's like these Doesn't guys, make much sense. it's not exciting. You know they're going to no. either like maybe get a single or strike out, and it's just it's a yeah. wasted at bat, man. Yeah, you're right. 20, 2023 shift is up. It's, that, to me, is laughable. That, to me, is tells you should tell you what how what the condition of the MLB is right now. Will you explain that the shift? Yeah, when you have a when you have a left-handed batter who's who's up at bat and they gonna, they're going to more than likely pull the ball to the right and so what you do is you take the third baseman and you pull him over and you put him in between second base and shortstop. You leave a big hole at third base, but the 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 stats say that the ball is going to more than likely hit that hole where you're moving the third baseman at. So you have a better chance of getting a, an out on a ground ball or a pop fly or something like that and one of my favorite things in baseball is to watch Manny Machado, third baseman for the San Diego Padres, play right field. <laughs> it's incredible, dude. He's yeah, so deep into right field. It's awesome, man. It's so cool. That position is very exciting to watch. And another guy I used to, yeah, Machado's up there. I used to love when the, the Red Sox would do it and Pedroia would be in short right. He yeah. was pretty fun at watching that. He had some range. So yeah. why would they get rid of that? What what was the problem? I guess you could say it's an unha- unfair advantage for the fielding team. I suppose. But because if you look at statistics, you're way more likely to get an out. You're way more likely to get an out. At a, it's, it's Statistically, it's already hard to hit a baseball. So that's yeah. why I think yeah. this, this shift is laughable. My favorite quote from it was, uh, who, I, who I just started really admiring this past year, never liked the guy, just started following him on TikTok. He's a great dude. He went through bullshit and it was not, you know, he got accused of nothing. Um, Trevor Bauer, he's, he is fantastic follow on the internet, man. The guy knows his stuff. I used to think he was a dick, but now I, I really respect the dude. He knows his stuff. Do you really? And, yeah, man. I think he's I, great I still to think listen of him to. as like a, as a prick. I'm like, eh, he is. I like I, him, I, but I, I, was I, like, kinda, eh. I can respect assholes, dude. Someone like him, he just knows his stuff and he can mm-hmm. back up his game. He can back yeah. it up. Yeah, for sure. And he's a pitcher saying this. He basically said that, that they're banning the ships because we might as well just ban ba- breaking balls while we're at it. Like, hey, what, you know what's what? Next? <laughs> that's and that's a great point because it's like what do you, you're gonna you're gonna remove the autonomy of the fielding team to do what they want, right? What's next? You can't. You're gonna tell me you can't move the outfielders over yeah. because of somebody. I mean, it's just silly to me. It, it, yeah, it is yeah. silly to, to to say that you can't do that. It's like saying you couldn't run a two deep safety in football because of a uh, cover. Like you can't. Yeah, what that's exact fuck? same. Yes, that that's right. a great sense. analogy. It, yeah. It's really it's that comparable, and it's it, you can't. <laughs> I can't. I would love to hear someone's argument on why it's, it would be good for baseball to ban that. Hmm. So yeah, it's kind of silly. You know, lay I down, that, lay down I a hopefully, th- I yeah, dude, something. I yeah. How many times I've watched Victor Martinez back when they started that shift on him for the Tigers, beat it just by a little slap hit down the third baseline because he's that good at hitting the ball. He put it down third. There's nobody there. Yeah, that's how you. That's how you do it. Yeah, beat I mean, shift. it's, it's it, you could call it an unfair advantage, but if you if you look at it, you're like, well, actually, you're already at an unfair a, advantage. Yeah, and I have a giant piece of this field that I could take advantage of. Maybe I should learn how to do that so that you know this doesn't affect me as and the best do right. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I think it's so damn silly. Yeah, I, I can yeah. totally agree with that. It's, I could talk about that for days. But <laughs> yeah. It'll tear you up. 
but but yeah, man, this, the sport of baseball is it's not in good hands right now. I hope. I mean, it, even the the whole Derek Jeter thing should also give you a big warning. Oh yeah, dude. So he was what is he? He was part is he GM or whatever he was, he was. CEO and and C- okay. president of be- uh, baseball operations. So I'm hearing just recently, all he was trying to do was go after a player named Nick Castellanos. Yeah, who was who has just recently been on a tear the last couple of years. All star, 300 hitters, hitting 30 bombs, which is hilarious. So, I used to watch him play for the Mud Hens. Yeah, right. He was he was when the Tigers drafted him. He was supposed to be one of the better players. The Derek Jeter wanted to go get him. Wanted the Marlins to sign him, and I guess ownership said they they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to go in that direction. And he said basically, "I'm done. You guys don't want to win. I'm done." Yeah, so he, he quit. <laughs> he quit. Um, I think within hours of the of the strike being official. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. it is incredible, man. It, Derek Jeter gets pushed out of his that position. Yeah. Someone like him, if that's not good, that's not a good sign. That's all I got to say. And all he said is he wanted to win. Right. And that's all he Maybe. said. I feel like there's only a few owners. Um, you know, I think the the Tigers owner has kind of uh, shown his his willingness to win in the past. And the Dodgers and the and the Padres owner, I mean, you can criticize their, their method of putting a team together, but they're yeah. not afraid to spend money. And they have very obviously shown that they're in it to win. That's what they right. want to do. There's not a lot of teams you could say that for. Yeah. I just actually got a notification on my phone that says the Padres have jumped into the fight for Freddie Freeman. Get the so, fuck out! Wow. Looks like you guys are bidding on him against the Red Sox. The Red Sox, huh? That's what it so says. That's was, what BR man, says. That's a freaking name. I I was told, man, who did I hear? I thought maybe Yankees. I heard. I did not hear the Padres. Me either. I heard maybe it maybe just Dodgers. Came on my phone. It's going to be one of those teams that Frank was just mentioning. I wouldn't say Detroit, but like one of the teams <laughs> that are willing to spend money. They ha- they're going to have to. You're right. Boston, you're right. I didn't think about Boston, but yeah. That's going to be crazy because they have a lot of dead weight right now with Eric Hosmer and Will Myers. There's a ton of money tied up in those guys. Man, that's going to be exciting to watch that pan out. And this is an exciting time for baseball just because they're behind and now you're seeing all mm-hmm. these guys get signed every day. It's it's exciting. What would have taken months is now like condensed into maybe like four weeks before the season right. starts. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of putting pressure on the uh, ownership, I think, or GMs a little bit. I heard a story that maybe not next year, but the year after, the baseball schedule is going to change so that there's less divisional games and each team will play every MLB team in one series during throughout the season. Cool. That's oh shoot. I mean, dude, with as many games as they're playing, I don't see why that's how that that shouldn't be a problem. I yeah, mean, for sure. Especially you play if the same like, team how many times? Just eliminate the division game yeah. as much. It's going to be a lot more traveling. Well, more traveling, but you're still going across the country for these. Uh, you can you know, set it up in a way where you play teams out west. Yeah, you're, if you're playing west. the Mets. You're playing the Yankees, and then you yeah, know, they right. go off to their, no. That <laughs> that's exciting. That's now that's something that's a positive, that's good that they might change about baseball. I think would help. Yeah, you're going to as a Tigers fan see more West Coast teams that you, than you regularly. Right, right, exactly. I think cool. that's cool. I'd love to see the Tigers out in San Diego, man. That'd be yeah. dope. Give me more of a reason to come out there. It's awesome. You, right. You bet. Who is a guy that lives in San Diego wouldn't want to come to Detroit and watch the podcast? <laughs> Beautiful Detroit, Comerica Park. Dude, uh, hey, we'd love hey, to have you. Say what you will. Comerica <laughs> Park is dope. It's a nice park. It's, getting, it's not. Hey, the downtown Detroit's getting nicer by, you know, nicer by the minute, man. Yep. It is. I was there last in 2018, end of 2018 for Dalton's wedding. Yeah. And it was great, dude. Yeah. it's It was fun. I just was up there a few months during the winter, I was up at Greektown, and it was it was awesome. It was a good time. Greektown's even gotten a lot cooler. Has it? There's just a lot more uh, room where they have for like sports gambling now up there. It's pretty sweet. Oh, that's cool. So does Illich own Wings, Tigers, and Pistons? I think it's Wings, Tigers, and I thought it was it was part of the Pistons or something. I don't know for sure. It's his son now. Oh, Tom Gores owns the Pistons. I guess. Okay, that's weird. I thought they would have shared since they share it with the Wings that they the Illiches would have just owned both teams. Yeah, but I guess not. Yeah. Speaking of basketball, you've been following this uh, silly Kyrie Irving story. Yeah. Oh, I just seen. Is it? He was at the game. They wouldn't allow him play in, but he's there without a mask on. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's so funny. There was a somebody put up a map, and it was Madison Square Garden, or where I think maybe it was wherever the Nets play, Barclays Center, and it was like uh, it was like color coded. So it was green, and the green was where Kyrie Irving could be, and it was the entire arena, and the red was where Kyrie Irving couldn't be, and it was the floor. <laughs> dude, <I guess. laughs> you can't explain that. Man. Oh my goodness, Good Lord! <laughs> and and uh, Kevin Durant kind of laid into the mayor. A little bit. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was like saying he was asking for attention and saying, you know, this is kind of silly and I think we can get past this. And Yeah. I mean, really, man, you got you to gotta look at it. That's, that's very silly. It makes so little sense that like, I don't know how you could sit there and possibly 
defend it. He's a Knicks fan. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my guys. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So who is our take in our uh, college basketball tournament? Purdue. I got Purdue in one. I filled out two. I got, and I, had, I haven't watched a lick of college basketball. Maybe a little bit of Michigan. Yeah. I like Purdue. And I like San Diego State to lose to Creighton in the first round. Do you guys follow Portnoy at all or Barstool? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. I, I love them. He's, dude, they're great. He's, he's big into Michigan ball. He's, he's like, what a draw. He's super into that and saying, I think they could win a couple games. Michigan could. Why not? Yeah, dude, they have a, I was reading up on them a little bit uh, on SI.com and, and they have like really good wins and like terrible losses. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess not, I'm sure every team does, but they have some pretty bad losses. Yeah. They're not the, they're not the best team this year, but that's the thing about Mar- that March Madness tournament. Anybody ever run? Yeah. They're in one of the harder brackets, though. I, I don't think they're going to make a big run because if they win their first game against Colorado State they have to play Tennessee, Tennessee. which third right. yeah third seed mm-hmm. and then if somehow they get through that they either got to play Nova or Ohio State which would be hard games and then even then yeah. you have Arizona in that same bracket and Illinois who is fucking insanely good so it <laughs> that's a hard hard bracket man you never know yeah never say never Hunter, Hunter Dickinson could just get hot but you never I think I had a, like a 13 team. Somebody has got a, a win streak going in, like the longest one. I got them winning a couple couple games. I want to say they're like a 13 seed, the, the Jackrabbits or somebody. <laughs> yeah, somebody funny. And I, I was looking at their thing on ESPN. So they had the longest win streak going, and real high scoring. I'm like, well, why not? Why, yeah. Why, why couldn't they win a couple games? North Dakota State, maybe, or somebody. Yep, that's what it is. South Dakota yeah. State. Yeah, that's it. The Jackrabbits. What a freaking mm-hmm. cool name. <laughs> Excellent name. What's what's better than has uh have the dirt bags ever changed your name? Nope. Out there, Frank. Are they still nope. the dirt bags? Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's still allowed. And they're great. Who is that? Long Beach. The Long Beach dirt bags. That's their baseball team. It's their baseball <laughs> team. The dirt bags. It's fantastic. Dude, did, but didn't they change the logo though? They're just the LB now. It used to be a yeah. guy. Yeah. It's just that. the LB, and it's it's like an old English LB. It's actually pretty it's, neat. It's sharp. I like the hat. They have, weird, cool uh, they have weird names out here for like these uh, Cal State schools and UC schools. There's the uh, there's the Anteaters, I think. <laughs> and then Santa Cruz are the Banana Slugs. The Banana oh, the Slugs? Fuck? What in the world? No, Irvine. I think Irvine are the Anteaters. Fullerton are the Titans. Pepperdine Waves. Uh, Pepperdine Waves. Go Waves. Go Waves, baby. <laughs> well, I don't know why I know that one. I, I used to play ESPN basketball when I was a little kid and always picked Pepperdine. Because their name was funny to me, dude. Their um, <laughs> my sister went to Pepperdine. And, yeah, you got to be smart to go there. Pretty yeah, smart. super smart. And uh, their baseball field, yes. is it faces the ocean, dude. Damn. If you're on the mountain yes, pitching into the Pacific, that's right. yeah, it's it's, it's unreal. <laughs> and the hills of Malibu, it's Righteous. unbelievable. You got a crying baby? Yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with these kids. Go run them around, run them ragged. But hey, it was a good talking sports <laughs> with you guys, man. I always is, appreciate yeah. it coming out. Our pleasure entirely, sir. Definitely see you guys on TikTok, Friendship News Hour. I'll keep promoting you. I love you guys very much. Much love. Much All love right, to you. Who, much that's love. pretty neat. All right, I'll see you guys. What a guy. What a guy, indeed. Um, he's been getting some people making like fan artwork I've seen from him. Lately, yeah, man. So man it's crazy. Bigger bigger. Who knew where <laughs> the depths that you who could take you? <laughs> Wild. <laughs> Wildness. Oh, you want to hop into some news here? Yeah, I wanted to bring something up. It, it was just, uh, I think it tied into this whole Kyrie Irving thing about just, you know, we're doing so damn much for no reason. And I came across uh, this story, and it's not like a one story kind of thing. It's like a culmination throughout the years. But I wanted to bring it up because I just thought it was so damn interesting. So there's a story in the Boston Globe, and the topic is the death rate for when when doctors strike, right? So doctors go on strike. Strike, they're not at the hospital. What happens to the patients? And strikingly, every single time that doctors go on strike, patient deaths either stay where they are or they decrease dramatically. Oh, isn't that weird. ridiculous? Yeah, what the hell? So uh, I read here, uh, there's a 2008 analysis led by Solveig Cunningham of Emory University, and they attempted to bring together existing research on physician strikes to see whether patterns existed on the impact on patients. They studied five strikes lasting anywhere from nine days to five weeks in places as varied as Los Angeles, Jerusalem twice, Spain, and Croatia. And they yielded data that they said was sufficient to study. And researchers found that mortality in all cases either stayed the same or substantially declined when physicians walked out. In the case of the first Israeli strike of 1973, patient deaths dropped by 50 
percent. Wow. Damn. That's like saying because baseball was on strike, there are more baseball games. That's it's like yeah, saying baseball right, players right, right. have gone on strike. Therefore, uh, the result of that is more baseball. <laughs> like that's the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard ever. They did acknowledge that there's potential flaws in the data and that like emergency services were always available. So like it, it doesn't mean that medical care like didn't exist or it ceased completely. And, you know, they brought in, you know, help where they could. Uh, but I think where they, where they really pin the, the result of this from is, is elective procedures. So non-emergency elective procedures. So for example, you wanted to get a skin tag removed. It's benign. It's not harming you. It's not going to cause cancer, but you want to get it removed or whatever. So you go in, it's probably a terrible example, but you go in, you get it removed. And then there's like a bacterial infection that leads to your brain and you die or some shit like that. You know, Um, this is exactly what happened to Kanye West's mother. Yep. She had an elective procedure, which was a breast reduction, I believe. Correct. And yeah, and, she, and so she passed uh, due, to, due to complications of that. So that, I guess that's what they're saying. I just thought it was the most interesting thing in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah. It's like, are they just like taking guesses maybe that are, are wrong? And then those guesses are such high stakes that it can lead to this? No, I guess? because I mean, I mean, if you think about it, right, like you're going to pursue some non-invasive elective treatment and... You go in and the doctor says, okay, there's a 20% chance that this could go wrong. And there's like an 8% chance that this could go terribly wrong. And so you spread that out over everywhere where all of these cases take place. And then you stop them completely. Um, I, I'm guessing that's what they're saying that, you know. Wow. Uh, that's so weird. But when nurses go on strike, they studied this and they showed that there's a, a, a net negative effect on patient health. Uh, For in, sure. In 2012, MIT examined nurse walkouts in New York State from 1984 to 2004. And it found that patients admitted on days of labor actions had death rates 18.3% above the normal when nurses were on strike. I mean, that makes sense, though, because the nurses handle all the day to day care. Like doctors, when you're in a hospital, you're talking to the nurse the entire time and you see a doctor for maybe three minutes and then they're fucking gone and till the next day or two days. Like, so that makes sense. If you don't have someone that's there all the time caring for these people that it's going to go to shit. So that that one totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just thought that was pretty neat. Wild. I saw an interesting one, hard-hitting news for sure. A uh, man was arrested after allegedly masturbating in a Florida Starbucks. Uh, allegedly? Alleg- well, no, it happened. Okay. He's on film doing okay. it. 27-year-old <laughs> dude. I don't know why the title says that. It's There's video of it, so it happened. But this dude, Blake Rain, he's 27 years old. He was just chilling in line at a Starbucks and just started cranking it. And people started filming him. And he basically kept doing it for 10 minutes. No one stopped him for 10 minutes. He kept doing his thing. And then police arrived. Uh, and then he started running. And ba- they they started, instead of like shooting him with a gun, they shot a like a dart stun gun kind of. <laughs> and dude, they <laughs> dirt, pulled him man. out, kept going, and they shot him eight more times oh before they finally subdued this oh dude. God. And and after he pulled him out the first time, he started jacking it again right in their face, man. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on in Florida, but I saw that story. I'm just like, wow. And his bond was only set at $700, so that's... $700? <laughs> Very clear threat to the public. Yeah, for sure. So be careful going into Starbucks. Did it mention any drugs specifically? Uh, It doesn't say any drugs. It just says that uh, he was charged with lewd and lascivious. Is that how you say that? Lascivious? Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Uh, Lewd and lascivious behavior, disorderly conduct in an establishment, and resisting an officer without violence. One of the cops did trip and fall during the chase, so he was injured. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's amazing. (laughs) That's amazing. Oh, you got a yep. dart in your neck. <laughs> but uh he is the he is apprehended. So for now the Starbucks is in Florida. It looks like this was in Miami. Uh they are safe for today. But if someone comes up with that big huge bail of seven hundred dollars, who knows? Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unreal. Do you remember last year that uh, ship that got stuck in the in the Suez was a Suez Canal? Yeah, the guy that tried to pull the u-turn yeah real quick. pretty much <laughs> so it, that was the ship ever given and it's operated by this company 
that also operates a ship called Ever Forward, and they have run aground in the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so it's not it's not as bad because it's not blocking any waterways, but it got close. I don't know how this shit can happen. Like, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me how these, th- <laughs> these things occur. Like, I, I don't know, maybe gusts of winds or something, but uh, I was reading into this, and this thing is, like, super stuck. It's, like, really, really, really badly stuck, and it just looks like it's just, like, in the water it just it doesn't look like it's stuck but i guess it's run aground and it's in super shallow water damn i think it was on like a a, on the way back or something so that's good but i don't know maybe this stuff happens more often than we give it credit for you know these things are giant dude big big cargo barges these things are fucking huge and uh maybe maybe it's just a a little bit more difficult than we give it credit for you know because it this is the this is the way that we get a majority of our goods yeah damn that's crazy, man. This shit is wild. I saw a uh, bipartisan bill that actually looks like it's going to go through pretty quickly, and I think I can definitely get behind it. I don't want to speak for you, but the U.S. Senate approved a bill this week that would make daylight savings time permanent oh, starting in 2023. God, dude, I was just talking yes. about this yesterday. Dude, we need to get rid of it. It's such bullshit, man. Like, I love falling back, but springing forward is the biggest bitch in the world. Like, I'll, I'll sacrifice falling backwards, but... um. Yeah, this was uh, this was today. Actually, this is this morning. The U.S. Senate voted unanimously to make daylight savings time permanent. A move that they say would make winter afternoons brighter and end the twice changing of clocks. It would it still needs to be approved by the U.S. House of Reps and then be signed uh, into law by Joe Biden. But basically, it looks like it's got all the forward support to move forward and, and make it happen. So that's Holler. pretty encouraging. I saw somebody say something and it was like the most true thing I've ever heard. Literally, nobody wants to do this. <laughs> yeah, right. But we can't change it. And that should tell you all you need to know about the country that we live in. <laughs> yeah. It's just weird, man. It just doesn't make much sense to me. But the, the big push, I guess, is like from airlines uh-huh. and transportation companies just saying it like fucks up all their shit. And it's just like, for why? <laughs> yeah, for why? I mean, I, I think the, the and I don't even know if this is true, but I think what we've been told is that it, it came into, into place because of farmers way back when. And it, it, I guess that time change helped with the cyclical whatever of farmers. Getting our wagons. To the market. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, well, listen. I mean, think about it, honestly, and and, and I think this is going to become a, 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 a way way bigger issue for us than we ever hoped it would. Because with what's going on in Ukraine and Russia right now, them being the first and fifth pr- biggest producers of wheat in the world, and now China coming out and saying that they've had the worst wheat winter in like I don't know a century. You know, so mm. I mean. I think, I think get ready, you know, batten down the hatches or whatever, but I think some tough times are coming for us. And it's those simple things that make sense. So I could imagine back in the day when, when our number one goal was, you know, survival and, and, and not, you know, worrying about, uh, the crazy nonsense that we worry about today, then that made sense, right? Like that could probably be something that everyone can get behind. Like, look, Hey, the farmers, I think this would really up production of, of wheat and whatever and food. So we're going to do this and I get it. Think it's, uh, I think it's long overdue that we stop this nonsense. Yeah. Leave our clocks alone. <laughs> <laughs> and we should probably touch on Russia just a little bit. I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it because we've dedicated almost two shows to it. And, um, uh, I, I, although it's the most important thing happening in the world right now. Doesn't it seem like news has slowed up a little bit? Like I keep hearing bombings. Like I've heard nine Ukrainian medical facilities have been hit so far. But like I feel like I'm not hearing as much news. I think you are. I Maybe just, I just think it's. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's the natural progression of these things. Like the interest wanes a little bit because you you, you mm. get a little bit immune to it, right? Like you could say you could hear that uh, you know Russia struck another hospital today, and you could hear the tragic stories coming out of it. But then you, it's like okay, I've, I've heard that before. It's it doesn't hit me as hard. And so, you know, and I think this is honestly what Russia is banking on is that the West begins to lose interest like we do with everything. This whole Russia debacle basically removed COVID from the forefront of our minds. And so I think that's just the natural progression of this kind of thing. But there, there is some, some interesting news. Uh, leaders of Poland and two other European Union countries, I can't remember who they were, uh, are in Kiev today in a show of solidarity with uh, President Zelensky, which is touchy. Right. Something happens to them coming in or out of that country. And now you get a whole other can of worms that you're talking about. Got the Franz Ferdinand effect. Uh, yeah, I know. Zelensky today, which I just think it's odd timing, um, has said that Ukraine will probably never join NATO. Oh, which is a big thing to say. <laughs> 
it is mostly the premise of why uh, the fighting is going on there in the first place. I have surmised from the beginning of this that a, a win for, for Putin is Ukraine uh, backing down from that position, which it seems that they're they're doing. Now, look, I can appreciate that. And if it's in the name of de-escalation and, and, and for uh, uh, broader diplomacy, then, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, maybe it means that, you know, Russia loosens up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, because they're just words and we know what words mean to uh, to Putin. So I'm sure a man that doesn't tell the truth very much doesn't trust very many people either. We'll see. I just thought it was a very interesting thing to say, particularly, you know, after so much fighting to say it now, I just thought it was kind of odd. Yeah, man. I have been kind of confused here too with NATO, like with this whole thing. If Russia ends up taking Ukraine, mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, obviously own all of it. And their whole thing, the whole position the whole time has been that they don't want NATO on their borders. Right. But like if they take over Ukraine, they share a border now with Poland. So they pushed to NATO basically. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know that the goal here is to absorb Ukraine um, officially, they said they don't want any occupation. The if you, if you take Putin at, at face value and you know do so at your peril, yeah. they said that the the main goal, the main propaganda goal, was to denazify Ukraine, which is such a ridiculous statement because they're president is jewish so like i don't and 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 we've we've covered it and again it's 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 been brought up actually a few more times since the last time we spoke here that you know there is a huge faction of actual white supremacist nazis that exist in the uh, the ranks of the ukrainian military so while that obviously wasn't their main goal there was a little bit of truth to the whole nazi propaganda however uh russia lost that that uh information war there they, they 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 lost their edge almost completely and the whole premise for them to to to, to invade ukraine uh was was kind of lost and now they have a renewed this is what scares me more than anything they have a, ren like a renewed confidence in this whole bio labs thing i don't know have you been following that at all no mm -mm. so last week there was a uh, she was like a st I think a State Department employee Vic Victoria New Newland and she was testifying to Congress on record and she said very clearly that there were bio labs in Ukraine and that the United States was very concerned about Russia taking over these bio labs which is a hmm. terrifying thing to say and yeah. then immediately Marco Rubio who was asking your question said yeah but if something happens in Ukraine from a bio weapons perspective you are you're 100% sure that it's going to be Russia right and she was like yeah for sure it's going to be Russia we know it's going to be Russia you know we we know what they're going to do by the things that they accuse other countries of doing right they did this in in Syria with with bio weapons too but then it opened up a whole can of worms and then you have a lot of people on the American right who have said, whoa, we just admitted that there's biolabs in Ukraine. Um, why do we have biolabs in Ukraine? Are we securing these biolabs? We think with some degree of confidence that this whole COVID thing was started by uh, a, a biolab that was studying COVID viruses. Right. So what are we doing about this? Why aren't we, like, why is it? And, and as soon as it happened and people on the American right started to ask these questions, everybody on the left started to, to shout them down and say, you guys are are spewing Russian propaganda. This is what Russia is saying. This is official lines from Putin. And it's all very scary because, I mean, on, on one hand, you, you don't want to inflame any propaganda or rhetoric coming from Moscow, right? Like that's probably not a great idea. On the other hand, if there are bio labs in Ukraine that have the potential of being overrun uh, by Russians, and then whatever's in those labs is not taken care of properly. Well, then we do have a giant issue on our hands. So it's actually right. it's actually a pretty terrifying thing to think about. And the whole reason I bring that up was to just just to say now there 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 might be some justification there in in Russia because if there is any sort of attack with with bioweapons and Russia can pin it on Ukraine, I don't know how they would, but let's say they they, they say they do. Well, then um, you're able to jumpstart that propaganda machine on the domestic front. And so now all these people who may have been against what's going on there now may have a invigorated reason to get behind what's going on in Ukraine. So dude, it's all really fucking crazy. And wow. um, I just, you know, I, I've said it before, but it really frustrates me that, you know, the official position in in American media and, and, and what's going on um, is is to come to the defense of Ukraine and, and, and democracy in the world. And I say, yes, great, perfect. But we cannot lose sight of everything because of that reason, right? This is not a reason to say that 
Tulsi Gabbard, for example, who just got accused by Mitt Romney of being a treasonous American who uh, may or may not be responsible for the deaths of people because she's she's asking the questions, why are there pile labs and what are we doing about it? That's all literally all she asked. And mm. and she's being called treasonous because because it's also something that that uh, that Moscow is asking. Well, fuck Moscow. You know, like I, I, I get you don't want to be a parrot of what they got going on, but these are also important questions. Now, Ukraine and the United States uh, Defense Department and most other media outlets have said that the idea that there are dangerous bio labs in Ukraine is baseless. And if everybody is saying one thing, I think, I think, although part of me tends to rebel against this, I think you, you, you kind of have to believe that. Yeah. Kind of have to believe that. On the other hand, all that these media outlets are doing is they're taking the official word from the DOD and, and from the Biden administration and from Ukraine. And they're saying, this is what they're saying. Um, this is what's going on. But there's no journalism going on. There's no investigation. There's no reporting. There's nothing. It's just like, take this at face value and run with it. To me, it's like, that's scary. We should actually look into this. We should make sure on our own, independently, this is what's going on. And then let's say something does happen. There is an outbreak and, 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 and bioweapons are used or some, some harmful pathogen gets <laughs> released or something. And then it's just going to be a, a big, huge, you know, he said, she said, it'll be re- blamed on Ukraine and it'll be blamed on Russia and we'll have no idea who to believe. Yeah. I, I want to ask you this too, because I, I saw a video and it was like all the, the past, I think back to George Bush Sr. talking about Russia. And at least it was George Bush Jr. because they had a lot of interaction together. And basically it just kind of went back and forth between the presidents we've had and it kind of showed over over the last 25 years or so that like all Republican presidents have had good relations with Russia and have had positive things even to say about Putin mm-hmm. and all the Democratic ones have not. And I, I just really didn't understand that. I wondered if you had any grasp of like why that would be, like why our relations change so drastically with the coming and going of two different parties. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's interesting because uh, I remember when Mitt Romney was running against Barack Obama in 2012. And they were at Mitt Romney was even was asked, you know, what is the biggest geopolitical threat? And he said Russia. Oh, and uh, Obama was like, this isn't the Cold War. The Cold War has been over for 20 years. You know, we have this that, and the other. I, I don't know. But if I if I had to take a guess at it, I would say that Putin has been very clearly against what some might call the new world order. I know that sounds like a like a really scary and like apocalyptic kind of phrase, but is, if you take it that phrase at face value, then then he's against the globalization of world markets. He's against wokeism and 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 that kind of thing. He's you know, they're very much uh, fundamentalist. It's it's actually a, a Orthodox Christian state, um, and for whatever it's worth, he's technically a part, a big part of it. Uh, although I don't know how much he actually goes and and to a mass or anything like that. But I would just have to imagine that the un- underlying values of personal sovereignty and freedom of a Republican candidate may be more sympathetic to Putin than somebody who is, you know, super liberal or something like that. I, I mean, I don't yeah. know. I mean, look, I'm just picking at straws. I, no, I really have no idea why that would be. Yeah, I was just curious because I remember when you had mentioned like how we had a couple politicians and their kids were, you know, involved with Ukraine. And I'm sure that puts stress on like a a relationship with Russia, perhaps maybe if there's been this ongoing Mm -hmm. aggression with Ukraine Mm -hmm. back and forth. And it's just, it's just weird to me that like parties, our party, political parties like actually affect our relationships with these countries so much. Yeah. Well, think about it, right? You're, you're Joe Biden. You're the vice president of the United States. Your son sits on the board of Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company, and he's getting paid tens of millions of dollars to, to do so. If you're Putin, how do you look at that? You know, yeah, like, right. like you're like, hmm, huh, what the fuck are you up to over there, buddy? Yeah, right. What are you up to, Hunter? You know, yeah. what, what's uh, what's your interest in, in a Ukrainian energy company? Why are you getting paid so much? What do you know about it? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, like, look, in 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 an attempt to not sound like a Putin apologist, I, I, I certainly don't agree with anything that's going on in Ukraine. And I, and, and I think that this is as clear of a case of good versus evil as there's ever been in modern military conflict. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would say that the United States has, has been an evil actor in places like Afghanistan for the way that we left or in Yemen for the way that we're uh, supporting the war there and the, and the civilian uh, casualties. But, you know, um, as, as it stands now, it's very clearly there's an aggressor Russia and there's a, a sovereign nation Ukraine. And I think it's okay to get into the weeds of it and talk about the different nuances that are going on and still have the opinion that uh, this is 
not a just war. Few wars are just, and uh, war is is evil, and, and all it means is heartbreak. It should be stopped as quickly as possible. It's interesting you say he doesn't want to occupy them, because so my best guess is that he just wants to get rid of the Zelensky guy and have it be more of an Eastern thought process, not Western, and let Ukraine be Ukraine. But if, if not, and he does occupy, man, he's now touching the borders of at least three NATO countries. So like, yeah. how would, if we would have to see that as an act of aggression, just like they would, like they came and took a huge chunk of Europe and now they butt up against Romania, Slovakia, Hungary, and Poland, which are all part of NATO. So it's, it's like, man, like that's, we got to kind of see it the same way if that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, like, and maybe, you know, maybe that could be the end game there, but if you, here's, here's where I see it is if you're going to go and you're going to occupy something like Ukraine, you're going to need a million and a half troops at least, mm-hmm. at least yeah. to keep to keep civilians at bay. If you're going to occupy Ukraine and you're not going to bring in the the resources that you need, and I don't think that that Russia has uh, to 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 actually make that happen and to actually occupy a country with military force, then all you're doing is setting yourself up for slaughter. Yeah, you're setting yourself true. up for slaughter because there, I mean, there's not going to be one general Russian general in Ukraine that'll be uh, uh, not afraid to turn their key in their car in, in fear of it blowing up or turning a switch on in a house in fear of their there, there being an explosion. This fight doesn't end because the president of the Ukraine uh, is is captured or murdered or whatever. It doesn't. And and so, I, I, again, I, I have to wonder, what is the motivation? Maybe we've overestimated who Putin is as this, like, sly, cunning world leader. And maybe he's just a dictator who got very, very lucky. And then now he's made a miscalculation based off of hubris and he's setting himself up for failure. I just don't see a way where they escape out of here with any sort of saving any face at all. I mean, maybe they do with, with the admission that Ukraine doesn't join NATO. Maybe they do. Maybe they step back and they say, hey, that, that's a big enough win for us. We have shown that we're willing to use force and we've ex- expressed to the world that we're not afraid to protect what's ours. And to them, that's a win. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But right now, I don't know. It just it just seems like a really, really dumb move. I also always question why he doesn't see the U.S. Like the Bering Strait, that's 55 miles, mm-hmm. you know, of, of like normally ice. Like it's probably, right. I think it is crossable from here to Asia, to Russia. Mm-hmm. Like that is a, you have a shared border with NATO already. <laughs> like you're not pushing into America. Yeah, you're not I suppose. Bitching about that. I like, suppose we've got to have military complexes right there. I, I guess I, I don't know, but like if we butt up to Russia, like we got to defend our borders too. I would think. Yeah, but you're talking. I mean, I think yeah, yeah. but you're talking about like the tundra. You know. Yeah. You're talking true. about like the very most remote parts parts of of Alaska connecting to the most remote parts of of Russia. Well, that's true. I don't think that's where anyone's going to go and fight a war. Damn, you know, I be a bitch of a war. Yeah, bro. dude, come on, no way. <laughs> hey, you know what else is crazy? Um, man, maybe we can end with this. There's there's been a uh, rumors and 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 evidence of what, what what's being called a soft purge in the American military. Have you heard of this? No. So members of our United States military are resigning in droves. Oh, because of fear of being shipped off to a war in europe oh damn so they're saying it's not what i signed up for we are getting dangerously close to war and i just will not be a part of it so before it even gets to that point i'm going to say thank you i appreciate my opportunity to serve this country and it's been an honor cash in on that pension real quick yep <laughs> goodbye damn dude isn't that crazy That's wild dude it's scary but dude i don't have to imagine that that would be happening even more if well trump i guess wouldn't have escalated tensions but if he had escalated tensions with Russia, like, I bet you that would be happening way, way more, too, because he's way more likely to go to war, but he has a better relationship with Russia. So that's yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm glad that we never got to find out, and I'm not happy that we're finding out now about what this administration is willing to do, because I just don't yeah. want to be in this position. But, and he even said it when he was at, he was asked about Zelensky. He said, you know, you can, you can talk a big game, but courage comes down to what you do in the moment, so we'll see how long it lasts. He talked a big game, Trump did, and he was a wild card and he was unpredictable. When push came to shove, I don't know, man, is this guy willing to fight? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I more so than Biden, though, bro. <laughs> I think, think Biden's a big old pussy. You think? I, I, man, I mean, I don't see Biden getting involved unless they step 
ground into like pull into a NATO country. And we pretty literally like legally have to. And even then I feel like he would try to find ways to get out of it. Like unless U S soil was attacked, but yeah, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't see Biden doing that, bro. Especially with being like the head of the liberal party. Like I, they're as anti-war as, as anyone would be throughout the history of our country, you know, like yet, it, yet it is, it is that liberal uh, faction of our country that are asking for the most escalation in Ukraine right now. True. Yeah. Yeah. With Without knowing that they are. Yeah, right. That's yeah. true. So it's frustrating. It's frustrating yeah. that like the hippies are now calling for war. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, I did you not know, think about just, that. It's yeah. just so bizarre looking at it. It's like, yeah, we gotta we have to put in a no fly zone. Hey, shut the fuck up, guy. You're not fighting. You're not gonna go fight there. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? <laughs> That's super true, yeah. man. Fuck. Anyways, well <sighs> I uh I don't know what's gonna go on there, but I do know where I can get a tremendous cup of coffee, Al. That's true. And you can do that. And coffee's great. You know, you're drinking that good, smooth cup of coffee. That's a treat all by itself. But you can also do that and help American heroes. It's going to make that coffee that much better. And that's exactly what our sponsor, Gun Barrel Coffee, does. They are proud to donate $1 from every single item purchased to veterans and first responder charities all across our country. And they do this by offering 14 different blends and roasts, which you can get in whole bean ground or single serve pods. And right now, as a friend of our ship, you can use the promo code FNH10. You'll save 10% at checkout when you buy their products at gunbarrelcoffee.com. That's promo code FNH10. Gun Barrel Coffee, damn good coffee, damn good coffee cause and i uh, just want to shout out i want to, we need to start putting this in there for all the f- friends of the ship at the end uh we do have merch now i know we've said it f- several times but if you are ever interested if you got a friend that might be great gifts we got coffee mugs on that motherfucker now uh with our logo on both sides so that's pretty cool check us out you can find it it's a shopify website but you can find it in any of our bu- uh, links in our bios on tiktok instagram frank's gonna hit you with all those tags right now but go check it out we got some really cool ass merch you can help support us help get the brand out there if someone asks you what the hell is the friendship news hour you can just you know give them a piece of your mind and let them know what you think about us go buy it it's a cool logo it's a cool brand we think we put out a good product if you want to uh talk to us about anything that we've said on this show today or any other episode that you've listened to you can hit us up friendship nh on twitter same handle for tiktok and instagram at friendship news hour and you can send us an email bummer media at gmail.com bummer dude dot media at gmail.com and we will see you next time